Welcome to the Cup Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm Randy Zellier from Back Sports Page. And I'm Amarito Rivera from Level One Games. How are you guys? And here we are for yet another great episode of the Cup Pro Wrestling Podcast. And guess what, guys? One of the biggest stars of Ring of Honor joins us on this program today, PCO. PCO is not human, but you know what? He showed that he has a human heart in this interview with us. And you know what? This this has to be like one of the ones that hit me directly in the chest while talking to him because there, there was such humility and humanity in his words. I, I was very impressed and I, I, I'm still stoked about it, man. And we, we talked to him a couple of weeks ago and here we are and we're, we're letting you guys listen to it. So I hope you guys enjoy it because I, I sure as hell enjoy talking to him. It was, a, it was definitely a great episode, and you don't realize by watching him on Ring of Honor that he's been in the business for as long as he has, and he certainly took us down memory lane, bringing up some old uh, WWE memories and bring, giving us some, some great stories from the past. But you don't want to listen to us ramble on. We'll be back after our interview with PCO. Enjoy, guys. All right, we're back here on the Cut for Wrestling podcast, along, along with Emerito Rivera. We have... One of the biggest stars of Ring of Honor joining us right now, PCO. Thanks for giving us a few minutes tonight. Hey, it's my pleasure. My pleasure to be here. So right now, Ring of Honor is back. How important is it right now to have Ring of Honor back in the fold as far as the pro wrestling community? With a company that has such a big legacy uh, since the early 2000s, you're a major player of it. How does it feel to be back and have the guys in the locker room back with you? I mean, uh I'm, I'm glad that we're back and we're back in a safe, you know, in a safe uh, way to do business and to a uh, nice protocol and uh, by the, the CDC guidelines and things like that. So uh, health came first, you know, for, for the executives at Ring of Honor. And uh, I'm also like uh, every time that uh, we're mixing up with the guys, it's hard because we, we can't all be together anymore, you know, so we're always, like, separate from each other. Like, uh, the only time that we really see each other, it's at the uh, when we go to pass the test. But we're six feet to the, the, apart from each other, but we're in lines getting the COVID test, like, three to four times during the week that we do the TV tapings. Uh, that's probably the only time that we're all together a little bit sort of but uh we all have a separate room uh, uh we all are at the arena at a different times so uh match for match so it's a uh, uh, we, we we don't really connect that much uh, as usual but uh i think that uh as ring of ring of honor we're we're doing like a fantastic job on the production the production side of it i think we've been Matter of fact, like this week, I felt like we were copied a little bit by other companies, by <laughs> WWE. <laughs> <That's the name laughs> More uh, backstage interviews and stuff like that. Less in the ring, you know, interviews and more like, you know, like like we do with uh, Queen McKay and, and things like that. So uh, I, I noticed that this week uh, on other shows. I, th- I think we're doing a tremendous job. Production-wise, the giant screen, no fake noise. It's it's real, you know. It's it's what it is right now, and it's, it, we're very authentic about our product. And that, that's important. And I'm glad you guys are safe. But it, it has to be hard because wrestling is such a tight knit community that you guys have to be missing each other, right? Yeah, we do, and uh, I think we, we miss the crowd, too, the fans. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Because uh, that's the hardest thing about wrestling in front of no fans. It's that, you know, very often we we feed off uh, of the fans' reaction. You can stretch a comeback or a sequences or, you know, you, you, you can stretch a lot of things depending on the way – the fans react if they're really hot for something you can keep on on going and if they start to die out a little bit or cool down then you can transition to another part of the match you know so uh, i would say that it's more mechanical without the fans and uh, 
less interactive because there's no interaction basically. So uh, it's another way to to work for us. It's 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 it's, it's very different. We have yeah. to adapt. But for a veteran like you, you've been around for so long. I, I'm sure that adaptation shouldn't take you too long and i'm sure you were probably like one match and you were like all right i got this figured out (laughs) yeah no no uh i knew exactly how it was gonna be because i was there like when we first we were at the uh 18th anniversary in las vegas in april Mm -hmm. and the show got canceled because nhl was canceling nfl was canceling and ncaa was canceling so eventually uh, I got a, a text message that the show was canceled, but I show up, you know, to the uh, to the the venue, and then they they said, you know, if there's any guys that would like to wrestle, so we're gonna put a few matches together. And uh, I was not for it, you know, because I thought maybe uh, the risk of injuries was higher because. Uh, like I said, you don't really feed off of the crowd, you know, reaction and things like that. Maybe the adrenaline wouldn't be the same uh, as doing like crazy stuff in front of a crowd. But, uh, you know, a few guys went and had good matches, but it's different. But uh, it gave me an idea of what it would be like. And, and then when we uh, <laughs> reset and we did reset everything, uh, I was ready for it. And at least because your style is very physical. So if, if we have to take a positive from the pandemic, it was that it gave you a little bit of uh, time to recover, I, I assume, right? Yeah, it's time to recover. You're going to say it's less mileage. It's more time to recover. But for me, uh, it's like a hockey player or any other like sports, you know, uh, the more you do it, the better, the, the, the sharper that you can be. So now the challenge is to stay as sharp as game time every day. And we have to be creative and find ways to get into a gym, try to find a ring and everything. Like there's curfew here in Canada at 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. There's uh, some lockdowns. There's, you know, you can't be more than such amount of people per, per building or different addresses and things like that. So you have to be very creative. You have to have a lot of contacts to be able to, you know, because you know, at the end of the day, we're professionals and we have to be ready anytime that anything might happen, like a, a show, uh, just being called up for a show or whatever. I just, I just feel like I have to be ready 24 seven. You know, there's, there's no excuses not to be ready, even though it's really hard to find places to work out and train and have ring access and things like that. It's, it's part of the job to find them, find those places. I'm sure I heard a couple of wrestlers uh, up in, in Canada, they were stuck there for a while. Uh, it is like hard to move around, right? Very hard, very hard. Uh, there are now, uh, when you come back to the airport, you have to show a, a test uh, 72 hours prior to landing in Canada that you're negative and things like that. It's just things are getting harder, like uh, because now we're like right in the middle of that second wave here in yeah. Canada. So it's kind of tough. Um, one thing that we, we wanted to ask you about, we were talking about your experience. Can you talk about the role that you have in the ROH locker room? Uh, a lot of younger guys, do they come and pick your brain? Uh, you know, how does that work? Are, are you more of a mentor for some of these younger guys as well? Not that much. I would say that uh, with the evolution of pro wrestling, I have a lot of like, uh, let's say the dojo guys, uh, guys like from uh, that are like are not uh, fully working for ROH, but they are under contract, you know, at the dojo, like which is like the performance center. Um, uh, when when I I see them, they they would ask for you know a few tips here and there, but the uh, the regular roster, uh, I think. Uh, my presence is more to be like a, 
to lead by example, you know, like I, I try to be really professional and everything. I try, uh, you know, to, to show uh, how it's important to be cooperative with everybody and, and not to treat like the, the like um, top, top guys differently than middle guys or new guys and try to treat everyone on the same, uh, with the same respect and, uh, Whatever, if you're a referee or if you're helping out building up the, the the ring or setting up the ring, because you know when you first start, you know in the business, you you wanna you wanna prove how much you're valuable to a company, how much you wanna you wanna persevere and and get in the ring and get a good spot. So it's it's all, I know it's all a part of the journey, and no one is more important than any other guys my eyes and that's what i'm trying to you know to apply my leadership that way and uh just being there on time be receptive uh be ready uh, ahead of time and try to get my things done as quick as possible so if there's an emergency or something else that pops out you know i'm there ready so just just showing all you have to be professional you know that's that's how I'm I'm trying to show my leadership. You know, not so much. I'm not so vocal. I I don't try to 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 to, um, to present myself as okay. I've done that. I've been there. I know everything. You know, I I I pick their brains a lot. I pick the ideas a lot. The other guys are younger guys because it's it's it's. A new generation, it's, and it's, it's the wrestling has evolved, and uh, and I'm part of the evolution, and I'll, I don't want to go back and remind them all the time that you know there's no need to do this or that because you know it doesn't mean something or there's no meaning to it or you know back in the days it wasn't like that, <laughs> so uh, you know it would it would sound like an old broken records, you know, so uh, for me. Uh, it's, it's again there the, the, the key thing is to be able to adapt to the new style of wrestling and to fit in with those guys and to uh, to just have that mindset that same mindset where you know uh, the main main thing is to tell a great story that's the only thing like I'm, I'm trying to to get across really you know the terms have changed the way to call the match has changed that there's so many things that have changed that i cannot you know say no it's not the way you say things or it's not it's not the way it's, it should be called or it's not you know i'm over all that now you know <laughs> I'm, I'm rolling with the punches so you've adapted along with wrestling, and you're always it has learning. changed. The terms have changed, you know, because there's not so much heels and face anymore. So, you know, you you will hear the term like come back on different side of the equation, which was never the case. It was always heat, come back, or shine, or cheat, or you know, the terms are just different now like it feels like you have a match you have like four guys or two guys and you can use the term come back for each wrestler which if you go back a few years that, that wouldn't even make sense like you would look like you don't know what you're talking about you know but now it's it's like a you hear that all the time, even from top guys, you know, so it's just things that have changed and evolved because there's no, no, there's not such a clear difference anymore that this guy is a heel and this guy is a face, you know, it's like everybody's like somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of uh, shades of gray, I would say, right? Is that the, the more best than ever for, yeah. and on every federation? Like yeah. it's not just one federation, it's not just one organization, it's it's worldwide. Yeah, wrestling as a whole. And I, and yeah, and I think that that's kind of cool, but it, it's like we are we're like more like in a I don't want to compare it because it's two different worlds, the UFC, but 
It's like if you want to cheer for someone for such and such reason, you cheer for this guy. But if you like the other guy better, you just cheer for the other guy. It's not anymore like, okay, he's Canadian. I'm going to boo him or he's Russian. He's, that's trash or, you know, now like you can have like a Russian guy, a German guy, an Austrian guy, and they'll, people will go crazy for them. You know, it doesn't have to be an American, absolutely. Or if you're in Canada, you don't have to be Canadian, absolutely. Or French Canadian, like anybody could be a star. You know, it's like wide open now. I, it's an I remember time, when I, I when I broke in into that business, like I was hearing all the time, like you could never be a world champion as a baby face because you're from Quebec. And I, and I always thought this is ridiculous. But people were really thinking that way. I'm, it was like the thinking back then. And it's great because they've stopped that thinking. And now that we're, we're talking about world champion, you, you started 2020 off with the world championship, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and like everything happened so fast. Uh, and you, you were feuding with uh, La, La Facción Ingobernables, right? Yeah. Is that because uh, I've also noticed you're, you're, you're teaming up with, with Mark Briscoe now. Is that going to yeah. be like a long term wow. thing? Like what's going on here? I, I was I was kind of hoping for a, like uh, a stretch hit for a few months because mm -hmm. I really I, I really thought like we're the two craziest like dude in in, in the Ring of Honor history. Yeah. So I thought that, that it would mesh like really good together, and I really liked the the mix. But uh, it was so many things that happened, like uh, you know, uh, guys were supposed to be part of final battle that can take part because they had COVID and, you know, different things happened. So as a booker, I guess the job was so tough just to get everything in order and get everything ready in time. And, uh, but I, but I thought we did some great, great things like the, uh, the reveal, you know, when I was in a box, you know, a Christmas <laughs> a gift box and I broke out of the box. I thought the reveal was insane. It was like really cool. And, um, yeah, a bunch of things that was done, me and Mark, I think, uh, I, th I think that it was a good match, you know, I really liked it, uh, but I don't know what's going to happen with Jay and, uh, uh what's going to happen in the future. It's, it's, it's very, uh, it's a time where I, I guess, uh, like we don't know what tomorrow is going to have to offer, you know, as far as the who's how many people you know how it will increase or decrease as far as COVID tests or hospitalizations or deaths and things like that I think it's a very day-to-day -day thing I think it's the same thing right now with the wrestling business it's a you have to take it day-to-day -day. yeah it's, it's a lot a, of juggling hard, you gotta do it's hard to plan it's hard to plan ahead either like a a uh rivalry or a feud or something because you don't know the guy might test positive yeah. in two weeks or next week or and so it's hard to plan ahead of the time right i think we have to be very creative and and just to be ready for anything yeah i think you guys have, have done very well on doing that man because i know it has to be extremely difficult to juggle all of the uh, creative and booking decisions. Yeah. And I, I can't that, imagine. I think the fact that we went back to the basics, the, the pure wrestling. Yes. I think that was a very, very smart move. That was very cool. That, that was the perfect timing to, you know, uh, set uh, our niche apart and, our product make a difference between other products and, and, and just just to I think that's the one thing about Ring of Honor is like I don't I don't say like we don't care about what others are doing. We we very aware of the competition and everything, but we are also very focused on where we wanna go and what type of wrestling we wanna present and what type of show we want to produce and things like that. So I think we're very goal oriented, so uh, it's, it's it's pretty it, it's pretty amazing to see how solid we are.
I have to ask, do you consider this the most fun you've had? Not the most successful part of your career, but is this the most successful part of your, or is this the more fun you have? Or this, and because sometimes a lot of people will balance it about how much fun they're having compared to how much success they're having. Do would you yeah. do you think that's a fair balance that this is probably the more uh, most fun that you're having right now in professional wrestling? Yes, yes, yes. Because because uh, uh, I had a I had great young great great runs uh, when I was younger, but I was very immature and very uh, a lack of wisdom, uh, uh, maturity, and experience. Uh, when, when, when you, you suddenly on top of the world and you're 25 years old and you have to make like business decision, like re really wrestling business decision as like, okay, is that okay? Uh, okay. Is that good for my career or is it going to bring my career up there? Or it's going to, you know, decrease my value as, as an athlete of, uh, increase my value as an athlete you get really confused at a young age at all ages but um because you always want to increase your value in the business as 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 a performer as an athlete but uh you know in the meantime uh you have to be uh, a good businessman too well you know if you became a champion and if uh, I know that I've, I've done like thousands of jobs, like when I started in this business, you know, so uh, you can't compare year for year. You, know, you probably have to balance it out from the beginning, you know, all the way up to today, things like that. But, uh, you know, like uh, I, I know like I had so much confusion, like the different point when I was younger and I was, uh, I was also, I would say, a little bit in a toxic uh, relationship uh, as far as my tag team partner with me and Jock. Like at some point, this was really tough. You know, it, it, I was very unhappy. Uh, but uh, my, my latest run uh, until now, I'm having like... Uh, a great time. I've been able to enjoy like every second of it, like every single second of it. Like I really was able to realize what I'm going through and appreciating every second of it, and uh, and, and just uh, just fully being there, you know. So at a younger age, when I was the tag team champion, then I wanted to become the intercontinental champion or the world champion. So I was, I was always. I was happy for a little while, then I would run after, you know, another piece of carrot until, you know, I would think that would make me happy and then I would run. So basically my barometer of happiness was based on my success in the business. As is now is my life is my barometer of happiness. Like I've got to be happy every day and it just makes my career better. It's, it's, it's total, totally opposite to what it was. But, you know, I had to go through some, like, you know, bad times and getting fired a few times and quitting a few times and, you know, going through some tough decisions and just just living and learning, basically. You know, I was just trying to, at the end of the day, you know, I was always trying to look at myself in the mirror and what I did wrong and and take full responsibilities for every wrong decision that I made and not blaming on the company, the other guys, or just, just, just be accountable for, for everything. That was, that was a huge uh, aspect uh, of my game and, uh, and, and, and having more success and being more happy with it. You, you definitely look a lot happier, man. Because I remember those days when when we were younger. <laughs> like you can yeah. smile now, you know. And, yeah, and I, I guess I, I don't know how many people are telling me that they can feel how great I'm feeling on my way to the ring. 
I'm, I'm having people telling me that, and I'm so amazed when I hear that. And I say, how can they feel? Because I'm, I'm like a poker face, kind of, when I'm going to the ring. It's hard to feel that, but I've heard that over and over. People saying that you, it seems as like you're the happiest time of your life, you know. So they, I guess they, they read through my energy or something. I don't know what it is, but it's true. You exude it when you when you go out to the ring, and this is me as a fan. Because I saw you personally uh, come out to the ring at Madison Square Garden at the Ring of Honor New Japan show, and that was a hell of an entrance, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and, 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 we, and I and it was it was probably the most you know awesome entrance of my entire career, and, and probably one of the top entrances ever in prof- professional history. But if it could have been timed, you know, a little bit better, because we we were rushed, man. It was really? such a day. Well, oh, it's uh, a lot of the, the 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 employees there at the Madison Square Garden. They're a syndicate. So me, if I would want to touch my chair or touch, no, you can't touch that. It's the syndicate, you know. Well, really? but we have to put it up there, like for that in three minutes, because we won't have the entrance if it's not there. Well, but it's the syndicate. Everything was a syndicate. The syndicate, the, I, and I was like, we were rushed. We had to put it up there, and we we didn't have time to, because I guess this, I think we didn't uh, allow in our thinking or New Japan and Ring of Honor. You know, it was the first time at the Madison Square Garden. A lot of things that that we've learned on the during that day. You know, I was there at 7 a.m. in the morning, you know, just to make sure, yeah, just to make sure that, you know, that the chair was going to be ready and, you know, nothing was going to be missing and everything would be working and that the car battery wouldn't be down and that, that it would, you know, have enough, like, sparks for the show and just making sure everything, you know, was going to be good because, you never know. You leave the car battery on the cement floor, maybe it loses its charge, and then you go for the spark. You don't have the spark and things like that. So that was the hell of a day, you know, in rushing from the morning. 7 a.m. I got up at 6 a.m., drove to the garden. 7 a.m., we had to take that all our stuff and bring it to uh, the back somewhere where the syndicate would have to pick up. We put it on a a lift that we couldn't touch just that too much, you know, because in case we get injured and things like that. Wow. It was so political over there with, really? with the employees of the garden. Yeah. But listen, I was there that night and you exuded something special walking to the ring. How, how'd you feel? Like, how, what was what's going on in here? Uh, it was so unreal. Like, I mean, and I didn't know, like, people were asking how many times you've been to the garden and just from watching like different clips, I didn't know I had been at the garden so many times. Then I saw a clip that I totally forgot about. It was me and Mabel at the garden. Then I saw another clip that I just two days ago that I totally forgot about it when Afa uh, was with the head shrinkers and he's like making a comeback on that. I totally forgot about it. And then I saw another clip of me and doing the clown another time. So I might have been there like. 15 times, I don't know, 10 times, 12 times, I would have to research it. But had, I've been there like quite a few times. But this one was like so different, you know. Uh, coming in as a world tag team champion, you know, making my entrance as a champion. Um, having my creator, D Destro, with me, you know, the spark, the electricity, that chant, you know, he's not human. There are 21, 22,000 people just going insane and also like i was able to place all my big moves the moonsault you know hitting the guys on the side apron with the flip you know from the top rope uh moonsault and and just to top it all off the big power bomb from inside out on the cement floor and sitting up you know and people going crazy from dying back down and seeing tears almost in, in the in the crowd, uh, the fans' eyes, you know, like. So I guess the, it was a roller coaster of emotions, and that was 
that that's what you need in wrestling that's what you need when you watch a movie that's what when you want to be entertained if you can go through all the possible emotions possible anger happiness sadness uh you know smiling crying everything all kinds of emotions i think that's the perfect be for success and i think we we've accomplished that and uh It's a very memorable night, you know, the entrance itself and uh, the risk, you know, that I took at the end. Because it was, it was so funny to, to have the new Japan officials going, no, 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 please, Pisio, we catch. No, no, I'm not human. Me? I'm not human. No catch. No, 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 please, we catch. No catch. <laughs> there was a fight there. It was a big fight. And I tell you, from being there myself, that, that crowd was electric, man. I left there walking on sunshine. I was like, I was blown away. Uh, that's cool. I you mean, guys did such cool. a great job. Thank you so much for that show. <laughs> oh, it was the cool, coolest show ever. I, that's, this is, I mean, I've got like memorable moments. Me against Jacques Rougeau being the main event on top of the old WWE roster in Montreal, 1994. Me and Bret Hart in your house three and the garden with Ring of Honor is, you know, uh, winning this, the, 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 the tag titles of WWE two was like a pretty high up adrenaline night. But nothing compared to the uh, Madison Square Garden show. It was yeah. like uh, it was the entrance I always dreamed about, and uh, and the moment that uh, that I wanted. But like, it's it's something that I was that I want to have like for let's say a year, you know, my you know, month, day. If it's night that we go live and it's packed, that's the type of entrance I would like to have for a full year. You know, just 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 having a hell of a run, you know, drawing massive crowd and making numbers on buy rates and things like that. Just to have that same atmosphere, but night after night, you know, or week after week, you know, that's that was that's the the achievement that I always wanted to uh, to. Uh, know to, to live in reality you know but uh i had I had a glimpse you know it was a, a, a big bite of it you know at uh Madison square garden it was great and how did that compare to when you won the the title off of roosh was that up there as well yeah it was up there but uh with roosh uh it was uh yeah it was maybe Yeah, very, very important too. That was that was uh, a day when I I found out was that I really went to get me. I was really emotional about it. Yeah, it was uh, you know it's like you see all the the cookie jars. You know, you see all the efforts, the the craziness, everything that you've been through. In order to achieve that one moment, uh, and it's all worth it. That's the, that's the only thing I can tell you. It's such a moment that uh, every failure, every setbacks, every no, every uh, big disappointment it was all worth it at the end. You know just what? For, what? Just for whatever just say 30 seconds let's say three seconds let's say whatever the time it might have been that moment that real moment because when 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 you're having the match you're, you're not thinking so much about it it's when when you get the title or or when you you know that you you'll get the title those are the two moments where you know you you get very emotional and also the, the, Uh, this I gotta, uh, you know, lift my hat, lift my hat to, to to Ring of Honor, uh, because every single wrestler uh, had stayed for the main event, which is very rare. 
like uh, I have had title matches during the course of, through the course of the year. Once against Dave and Toronto, I think there's 15 people, 20 people left, you know, because everybody's got a show the next day. They want to leave early. They want to travel. They, they want some sleep. So when, once they're done, you know, they want to go to their room as soon as possible. And uh, I think it was like 50 people there. Every executive, the, the president, the vice president, Booker, every single wrestler that were on that car, plus everybody that helped out with setting up the room, plus the production crew, everybody. When I came back uh, to the curtain, I, and I was taking my time, I was like high five, like everybody in the crowd taking a picture there, picture. I, it took me maybe just 45 minutes to an hour just to go back. <laughs> Because I didn't know like that everybody was waiting for me, you know. Like for me, it was like another night as usual. Like I'm going back to my dressing room. I'm gonna undress and put my belt in my bag and on. I came across that curtain on the way back, standing ovation from all the boys and everybody, and uh, had to make a speech. And then uh, yeah. I just, I just told everyone all important. This, this was for me. And they know, everybody know how much you have to grind just to get an inch in this business. So to achieve something like that, it's, it's a lot of effort and, uh, you know, uh, paying a price day after day, you know, whatever, it, working with injuries or bruised up or banged up or just you know, discipline yourself to different type of uh, rituals that you have to go through in order just to be able to, to perform at a high level and to deliver and, and things like that. So it's uh, it was really cool, the fact that everybody was there backstage. That is too awesome. I'm so happy you got to experience that. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> It's well deserved because there was one thing. I'm sorry, but, but there was one thing I noticed when you were doing uh, media. You held that title with such revere and and, and poise. It was amazing. It was like your back. So proud, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was like you you exuded championship, and that was so cool to me. Like I was like, wow, PCO's got it, you know. Well, yeah, I was uh, I was like really really proud of it, and and I took my job very seriously. And my job, I saw my job as not as much as to be a great performer in the ring and to really represent that title, but also I, I really wanted to, to uh, you know, get on a Ellen DeGeneres show. And to, so, so I did a lot of shows in Canada, like crazy uh, ratings, like two millions, you know, like for a show like in Montreal, uh, you know, where it was like everybody knew what Ring of Honor was and, you know, because, you know, very often wrestling fans will know what Ring of Honor is, but like the day-to-day -day person walking in the street, they don't, they don't all know. They don't even know most of the people today think that WWE and WWF are two different companies, you know, <laughs> uh, with the change of that last letter, Sometimes I'm talking to people who say, well, yeah, well, what's the new company now? Like the, the WW, and I say WE. And <laughs> yeah, new company. It's not a new company, it's an old company, but they don't realize it's the same company that Hogan was part of and, and things like that. So for, for a lot of people that aren't wrestling, like hardcore wrestling fans, like they, they don't know all the changes and why they took one letter off and the pandemic kind of uh, because my my goal was to build up that title so I that I can pass the torch eventually you know to uh, to someone else but I I felt that I could achieve like uh, the thing pandemic came in and um, I dropped the title to Roosh uh, in February anyways so mm -hmm. that's that's the little like you know thing that uh, you know I think. Uh, uh, I was hoping to to be able to achieve more with the title, but I, I did everything that I could while I had it though. Like I, I didn't, I didn't sit on it. Basically, you know, I was you, I was working hard. You set a greater example of what a champion should be. And I have to say that. And, and one oh, of the, thanks. 
And one of the things, too, I noticed, too, uh, is when we talk about your popularity at this point of your career, is that you were on Cameo. And can you talk about the experience of being able to connect with the fans uh, through Cameo and, and, and seeing how they want to hear from you to talk to them? How, how, how special is that for you? Yeah, it's, a, it's really great. Like, uh, I'm having sometimes, like, which is, like, almost unbelievable. Like, uh, I got, like, a, a screenwriter, a uh, guy who writes screenplays for, for Hollywood. And he wanted, like, through one of my cameo, he wanted to thank his agent. Uh, let's say Ray Ferraro uh, works at the uh, United... Um, uh, I, I can't remember the full name of the agency, but it's a United Talent Agency in Hollywood. That's his agent, and the uh, he wanted to say thanks to his agent to trust him and things like that. And uh, so I made a cameo for 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 for, for, for those guys, and uh, just just having guys you know from Hollywood asking you to do cameos for them, like it's, it's pretty awesome. That is, awesome. that is pretty cool. But one thing before we let you go, because we have taken a lot of your time and I, and I thank you for it. Uh, I noticed on, on, on your social media, you, you have a little web series. Uh, uh, what, yeah. what's, what's that? Justice for PCO, is it? Yeah, yeah, PCO <laughs> Justice. <laughs> Justice. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about that a little. Yeah, it's a, it's a superhero. It's, it's my superpowers, the electricity, <laughs> basically. But, you know, uh, the electricity comes in just when I'm in real deep uh, trouble, you know, when nothing goes uh, accordingly anymore. So most of the time I could carry on with the electric that I've got it myself. And uh, I don't I don't need uh, that much of, you know, jumping cable powers and things like that but basically it's just you know making justice all over the world and uh just uh it's just cool because i always like movies and uh and, and uh three years ago 2017 i started to do a, an episode per week on feats of strengths uh, different feats of strengths and different things Eventually, we went through all kinds of things. I've, I've done, like, I've, I've tore the, the, the deck of cards. I had, like, cement blocks broken in my my spine, uh, my, my my stomach, and my chest. I had that dart thrown in my chest. I had, like, my mouth stapled uh, with a stapler uh, just to be like Frankenstein. I, I've, <laughs> uh, what else? I, I rolled flight bands. I... I uh, I bent bars and a half, steel bars, nails. Uh, I've done like so many. I can't, I can't, I can't. Been kicked off out of a, a cliff, you know, down to like a, a like a lake, uh, like crazy stuff, like uh, crazy workouts, crazy feats of strength, and eventually. So we said, well, we'll, we'll reunite like a, a casting, and we'll. we'll shoot a series like it's gonna when we assemble every two minutes per week at the end you're gonna have a movie of uh, an hour and 32 33 minutes and uh so we're gonna do a big premiere uh in a theater in hollywood and one in montreal and we'll see how it goes like you can't wait to put the whole movie together oh that's i, I can't wait to see it all man that's really cool um we really can't thank you enough for your time tonight and we really appreciate it. And we'll be pulling for you. What the ring of honor is now back, uh, back and better than ever. And, you know, stay healthy and, and please, you know, be safe during this crazy time. Before you leave, yeah. just tell us where we can find you on social media and online. Yeah, of course. Like uh, PCO is not human on Twitter. So the web series goes on every Monday night around 8 p.m. Uh, on YouTube at Pierre Caldwell at PCO and uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. It's all PCO is not human. And like, uh, it shoot that, that thing all over the place at once. It's a sh shotgun. It's like the Siri goes everywhere or sometimes special workouts and things like that. And I'm very, very active on Facebook, very active on Twitter, very active. Uh, I'm, the, the place that I'm the least active is on uh, Instagram. But uh, I scroll and I watch and I, I go through, but uh, it's time consuming. I'm trying to be also performing 
everywhere else. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of I don't want social media to lead my life, but I want to be in control of my social media. So uh, basically that's what it is. But uh, I'm going to be honest with you, but you are like one of the coolest, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to be cool all the time. I think, <laughs> I think if I run into like people that I really admire, I want them to be cool too. <laughs> okay, we're back here on the Cut Pro Wrestling Podcast. What a great interview with PCO. Um, I we have to thank Ring of Honor for helping set this up. What a class act and total opposition from the character that he plays on uh, Ring of Honor. Definitely. Like I said, PCO may not be human, but goddamn, he's got a human heart. <laughs> I, I I can't get over that. And that that's my line. And, I, and I've been saying it ever since I taught them, man. I, I can't get over it. Uh, you can right now you can follow the Cut Pro Wrestling Podcast. We are on Twitter at Cut Wrestling BSP. And I heard a rumor that we're elsewhere, Em. We are on Instagram. Jesus Christ, I'm knocking stuff over. <laughs> and the dog goes. All right. So we are on Instagram on the Cut Pro Wrestling, the Cut PW Podcast, the Cut Pro Wrestling Podcast on Facebook. Uh, I'm a little destructive today. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm very excited about this interview. So it's probably just that. I'm jittery. And we also, you can listen to us on all the podcast networks. We are on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Podcasts. And guess what? We are now on iHeartRadio. And by the way, if you uh, like what we do, head over to YouTube and give us a subscribe. We would love to have you. And guess what? We're dropping new episodes every Monday. And we have to thank our great producer, Andrew Fumi, for the great job he does. He makes us look 10 times better than what we really are. So, exactly. Andrew, thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Andrew. And maybe he can take care of the mess that I just made here. <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, they said there's no, there's nothing goes wrong when it's live. So with that being said, I'm Randy Zellier from Back Sports Page. I'm Marito Rivera from Level One Games. And we'll see you next week here on The Cut.